Hey everybody, welcome back to Storytime with Kathleen. Look, I even washed my hair. Um, tonight, we're gonna be, well, first of all, I have a scarf on. I'll only say this a few more times. I'm trying to wear a scarf every night in honor of the lady who may prevent all of us from dying. Whatever that lady's name is, her and Tony. That's who I'm banking on. Uh, tonight, we're drinking a little Pinot Noir, Bluebird. It's about $12 at a fancy store or a shitty store. Available in grocery stores as well, uh, unless you live in one of those communist states where they don't let you do that. Um, yeah, that wouldn't be my state. Anyway, it's uh, super light. My friend Lewis hates it. I love it because there's no hangover. Drink the whole bottle all by yourself. All right, we're going back to the Dust Bowl, uh, the Depression, and um, Tanya's still talking about her, uh, her daddy way back then when he was a child. So at this point, uh, he's got to go hunting in the middle of the night. That's as best as I could do to <laughs> catch up. And look, that Ron's dog ate part of my cover. That's how much he hated Tanya Tucker. He thought, I, I, that French bulldog thought, I'm just going to eat this lady. <sighs> There's, this is out of print. I really didn't need that. All right. Uh, this is after they said we got to go find some s food. Daddy crawled off the old mattress carefully so not to awaken his sleeping brothers and sisters curled up beside him. He put on his pants and he followed Jack. If there was any food to be had, real food, he wanted to find it. They'd been living on cornbread and turnip greens for a week. When they slipped outside of that little tar paper shack, Jack handed Dad a gunny sack and led him into the hills, explaining he heard of a nearby farmer who had a shed full of so many potatoes that a family couldn't eat them all in a year. I doubt it. I don't think that was a rumor that got a little out of hand. That's what I'm going to bet this don't turn out right. That's my preview. And I haven't read the book, by the way. And I'm tempted to read it without you, but I'm not. Jack figured that made them fair game, so to speak. Daddy, why? To steal them? All right. Daddy followed with his gunny sack slung over his shoulder and his stomach aching with hunger at the thought of more potatoes than somebody could eat in a year. Jack and Daddy sneaked through the fields in the moonlight towards a nearby farm, dodging tumbleweeds and praying they didn't run up on any rattlesnakes since them hills were full of them. I can smell them, Daddy said when they crested the hill above the next one. I can smell potatoes. Mm, no, I'm a potato expert. You can't smell them. Maybe he had a different sense of smell. Daddy said it was later when they felt like they were following their noses to heaven. They got to the little shed. Jack tried the door. It was locked tight. They made their way around the side looking for any weak spot, a loose board, or a broken window. Suddenly, Daddy spotted a hole near the ground where it looked like an animal has chewed its way through. He got down on his stomach and peered through. There they are, Jack. There's stacks of potatoes in there. Stuck his hand through a hole, and a trap snapped down on his arm. What did I predict? This wouldn't. <laughs> and well. And all the pain was agonized. He didn't dare cry out of fear for weakening re for awakening the farmer. Jack ran around the side of the shed, found a piece of metal, and finally whacked at the lock until he broke it off. Daddy literally passed almost passed out by the time Jack pried the trap off his bloody arm. It was an old worn out trap, or he never could have done it. Jack ran out of the shed and hurriedly wrapped Daddy's arm in one of the gunny snacks and pulled him to his feet and started to help him out of the farmer's barnyard. Did you get the potatoes, Daddy asked. Jack bit his lip, torn between needing to get Daddy home and needing some food. He ran back and filled up the sack, and the two boys made their way back through the hills. They cleaned Daddy's wound at a pump. And I guess there was no tetanus shot involved in any of that, but that's what happens when you're poor, and that would suck. Fortunately, the bone wasn't broken, and there was no infection. Well, there's the answer. It was a miracle he didn't get a tetanus, see? Exactly, <laughs> from the old trap. Daddy hid his wound from his mother until it was neatly healed, then made up some lie about how it happened. Grandma Tucker had so many worries, she didn't have time to question it. When his arm ached at night, Daddy just turned over in bed and grit his teeth. And that's what they like to call Tucker tough. And you really can't argue that if you got your arm uh, in a hunting trap, and you just had to go, go home at night in bed, and deal with it on your own. It's pretty messed up. Pretty tough people. So that's night four. Probably wasn't as funny as last night, but you know what? I didn't write the book. I'm 
I'm just reading it. Some will be better than others, but we're going to get to some good stuff because I did skip through, I did skip ahead to uh, get to a little Glenn Campbell stuff just so I know what I'm getting into. Totally worth it. All right. Do what you need to do to get through tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow night right here in this chair.